Hello there, my fellow ignorant heretics, and welcome back to some Warhammer 40k lore. Today we shall make another entry into our Chaos Cult miniseries. We have talked about a lot of these groups in the past, although, as you may remember, most of them are not what you would call disciplined or well-organized logistically. Outside of the fan-favorite Blood Pact, of course. Well, today's topic is quite similar to them. Another militant and disciplined cult known as the Stigmatus. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn some stuff about them, shall we? In a nutshell, the Stigmatus are a well-organized human military force in service to the ruinous powers found in the Acheros Salient of the Jericho Reach. It is commanded by self-proclaimed cult general Elak Sarda. Imperial propaganda portrays Sarda as a heretic, a madman, and a pawn of the ruinous powers. The doctrine of the Stigmatus portrays this infamous general as nothing less than a living god, however. Unfortunately for the Jericho Reach, both views are kind of accurate. Although champion and overlord of the former warlords of Kazant, whose scions comprise the majority of the Stigmatus officers, Sarda claims no familial ties with any bloodline of the Expanse, nor does he claim any planet as the world of birth. Indeed, his origins are pretty much unknown, as if the Cull General did not even exist until his first assault upon Vanity in 788 M41. Elak Sarda's appearance is well known among the Achilles Crusade's forces thanks to the innumerable blasphemous statues and shrines that the General leaves in his wake. He is a tall man with handsome, strikingly angular features, looking every inch the ideal military leader. One might even confuse the cult general with a stoic Imperial Guard commander, were it not for the lattice work of scars covering every inch of his skin. Stigmatus Dogma claims that the name and rank of every cult member is inscribed upon the flesh of the cult general, just as the scars of rank and fealty mark the flesh of each Stigmatus in turn. As his warriors fall in battle, their names upon the cult general's skin are said to bleed. As the Stigmatus knows war without ending, so Elak Sarda strides the Salibos war zone, leaving an unbroken trail of blood to mark his passage. There are some reports that Sarda has even taken a meteorite forged sword from a fallen Dark Angel's captain during a battle on the planet of Malehi possibly even one of the famous Heavenfall Blades so prized by the Dark Angels. Now, the origin and history of the Stigmatus itself are both shrouded in mystery, despite the best efforts of the Inquisition and the Imperial Guard intelligence. What little is known comes from the interrogation of captured Stigmatus officers. All that is known for certain is that the history of the Stigmatus began on the wretched death world called Kazant. Kazant was a planet ravaged by perpetual war long before the coming of the Achilles Crusade. While few historical records survive the onset of the Jericho Reach's Age of Shadows, indicate the hereditary nobility of Kazant beginning an irreversible slide into decadence. This occurred shortly after the disappearance of the Lord Sector designate Massimat Helikos in a devastating warp storm in 416 M36. Without a central imperial authority to enforce order, the noble houses of Kazant were free to give in to whatever they wanted. Political assassination became the norm of the day. Blood feuds led to civil war. And in less than a century, Kazant was a planet-wide war zone. The ecclesiarchy of Kazant, the final imperial pillar of authority, would shatter under the weight of noble hubris, eventually splitting into multiple factions, each loyal to a different bloodline. The Imperial Creed was perverted to serve the needs of the nobility, each warlord claiming themselves the inheritors of the God Emperor's authority. In a few generations, the warlords began to be considered divine creatures, supplanting the Master of Humanity as a focus of worship. By the advent of the Achilles Crusade, the God Emperor was all but forgotten on Kazant. Thousands of years of war would leave Kazant a withered husk of a world too, her mines were abandoned, her fields were barren, her people weak and broken. At the end of the day, the victors were those few warlords who managed to secrete away a modicum of Kazan's dwindling resources. The rest simply starved in their fortress caves. 
Faced with the realization that Kazan could no longer support itself and their ambitions, the remaining warlords banded together with an uneasy truce and turned their collective gaze to the wider galaxy. A fleet of vessels, their hulls long ago gutted to provide material and technology for the civil war, were hastily put back into action. Taking advantage of Kazan's position along the Iraquial main, the warlords remade themselves into pirates and corsairs, raiding neighboring star systems and bringing new resources to their world. By the time the Achilles Crusade came, Kazan was a world many feared. Made wealthy by centuries of plunder, the population reinvigorated by slaves captured from all over the reach, her shipyards constructing mighty vessels of war, Kazant was a prize that Lord Militant Tiber Achilles could not ignore. Indeed, the Lord Militant claimed the planet in 782 and 41 after a difficult campaign. However, as he moved to consolidate imperial power in the region, the displaced warlords fled into the current stars to lick their wounds. Within just five years, elements of the Kazantine warlord fleet returned, deploying the first regiments of the Stigmatus across the Crusade front. Taking advantage of the Lord Militant's untimely death, this highly organized cult broke the Imperium's hold upon many worlds, and thus the Salibos war zone was born. And so, on the battlefields of the Acheros Salient, the legions of the Stigmatus became unmistakable. Mutants, corrupted humans, and psychers working together, their flesh scarred by old wounds and the ritual brandings of their dark masters. Despite their seemingly random composition, the units of the Stigmatus display a surprising level of battlefield coordination which is quite uncommon among the lost and the damned. Their ordered ranks, tight formations, and ability to carry out complex battlefield strategies did come as a shock to most Imperial personnel especially those levied from the Calixis sector, which were accustomed to the riotous and disorganized cults of the likes of the Pilgrims of Hate. If you want to learn about those, not to advertise myself or anything, I did make two videos on them too. The Imperial commanders who doubted the organizational effectiveness of the Stigmatus will not live long enough to regret their mistake. The key to this discipline lies within the cult-like structure. Indeed, the further up the chain of command one looks, the less the Stigmatus resembles a corrupted version of the Imperial Guard, and the more it resembles a dark reflection of the Ecclesiarchy. The rank and file are indoctrinated to look upon their masters as warrior priests, who in their turn worship their superiors as saints. As the soldiers of the Stigmatus rise in rank and experience, they are indoctrinated into the deeper mysteries of the cult their flesh branded in jagged scars of rank and devotion, their souls lost to a twisted creed offering divinity via warfare. Every enemy slain in battle is looked upon as a sacrifice, a blood offering sent up the chain of command to Elak Sarda himself, the cult general whom the Stigmatus claim as their god and master. Upon initiation into the cult, each Stigmatus is branded with a ritual scar, the symbolic wound from which the cult itself is named. As the Stigmatus advances in rank and initiation, new scars join the first. Cult veterans are disfigured by scars that display rank, honor, notable kills, and survival of many battlefields. The most seasoned of Stigmatus warriors, the infamous Defaced, are said to have their entire hide composed of nothing but scar tissue. In his time as their leader, the cult general Elak Sarda has accomplished many a feat which awes and outrages the Achilles Crusade's leadership. Without the backing of the Imperium, he established an army that spreads across the dozens of systems of the Reach. Via force of will, he manages to keep that army well supplied and mobile enough to engage the Crusade upon many fronts. Furthermore, the cult is well equipped, in spite of the limited technology base of the region. Clearly, the dark powers of the warp have aided its cause greatly, and contributed to the fanatic loyalty of his forces. However, those entities are seldom known for their logistical skill. Those responsible for that have become traitors to the Imperium, but Sarda is believed to have come from an isolated, relatively primitive world. Similarly, although much of their equipment is likely provided by the heretics of Samek, no other leader is known to have procured their support. 
Throughout the history of the Imperium, there are not many instances of a traitor army which has been as well equipped as the Stigmatas. Their unusual coordination and aggressive expansion represents an unanticipated challenge for the forces of the Akeros Salient. In battle they attack with zeal, as they seem almost as driven to martyrdom as they are to victory. Their infantry favor a strategy of endless waves of humanity. When unaccompanied by other forces, they will seldom even make effective use of terrain. Their fanatical devotion to heathen gods is apparently their greatest armor. Now, if these zealots were the only forces of Sarda, he might have already lost. But in addition to warbands and demonic allies, the Stigmatus also has elite units. Some of these are equipped with gear provided directly from the bigwigs of Samek, including armor, unusual weapons, and devices which are entirely foreign to those in the Imperial Guard. Others are well-disciplined units which have dedicated themselves to the service of specific warp entities. Although not as effective as Chaos Space Marines, for example, these units bear dark blessings that they can deploy in the service of the Dark Gods. The specialists include units adept at infiltration, subversion, and even the Dark Arts. In several cases, Stigmatus infiltrators have successfully assassinated planetary governors in the region. The greatest concentration of Stigmatus units are in the worlds of the Celebos War Zone. There, the elements of the Chaos Forces outnumber the army of the Achilles Crusade. It is only through their faith in the God Emperor that the Crusade has persevered. The Stigmatus are not native to the planets of the Celebos War Zone itself. Rather, Sardo is believed to have come from Malehi, one of the ghoul stars. The fortress worlds of the Dark Gods located at the edges of the Hadex Anomaly are densely populated by potential recruits for the Stigmatus. In these environs, humans and mutants are tainted by chaos from birth. The hopeless are selectively bred to create the fanatical and capable warriors to feed the armies of Sarda. It is also believed that some of these planets are subject to the time dilation which has been observed in the region. By taking advantage of this shift, the forces of the Stigmatus can have Terran years to breed and train extra forces, while only days or weeks pass in the worlds outside of the Hadex Anomaly's influence. This enables the Stigmatus to effectively replace even their worst losses in a very short time. Talk about using cheat codes when you can literally slow time down to grow your forces quicker. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Stigmatus cult and their leader, Elak Sarda, for today. Fortunately for all of you heretics out there, this was not the only episode I'll make on them. And the next one is gonna deal with their recruitment, as well as some info on their specialist and unique types of warriors so do stay tuned for that. Outside of it, what about you? Did you ever hear about the Stigmatus before? Are they among your favorite Chaos factions? As always, I look forward to reading your thoughts on them in the comments below. If you found the video informative, do consider leaving a like, share and subscribe for future content. Thanks a lot and the Emperor protects!